everyone welcome back so today we are going to create a vm virtual machine uh, in our azure portal so let's go to the portal and uh, here you can see the all services click that and under compute you can see your virtual machines uh, click that and here you need to create a virtual machine so i'm going to create a new one and uh, so for the resource group i'm going to create a new one you can create a new one like just give the name or you can uh, uh, select the pre-existing uh, resources group so in this case let me select vm1 and uh, let's say it's my vm1 and I'm um, uh, keeping everything as a default. So it, was, it is already saved my previous password, <laughs> username and password. So I'm keeping it default. You can uh, keep any username or password that you want. And in this case for inbound, I have accepted RDP and uh, HTTP. So you can check the other configurations as well. But in this case, I'm uh, keeping everything as default. So validation failed. So. Oh shit, there you go. So just go and review and create. So the validation has been passed. There is no policy that is stopping this. So mm, let's go ahead and create. So it's uh, the deployment is in the process. So once the virtual machine is deployed, we have to connect it. For that, there will be a file which we need to download and uh, we should run in our system. And in that VM, we are going to host a web server and test it. There you go. So the deployment has been completed. You can go to the resource. Now we can see a button uh, connect. Click the connect. And we are using the RDP. So click RDP. And you have to download the RDP file. So once the RDP file is downloaded, uh, click it and click the connect so we have got the prompt and just click yes so once you click yes uh, the vm will be connected let's wait for that Still, it's taking the process to. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see my VM has been uh, created. And let's go to the start button. Okay. And here I'm going to PowerShell. So, in the search button, I'm using PowerShell. There you go. So this is a server uh, management dashboard that you can see behind. 
let's go ahead and uh, install a web server so this is the command for that wait a few seconds uh, to get it installed So once uh, we get the success message, uh, we have to copy the public IP address that uh, we have in our uh, Azure portal. And using that, we can uh, access the server. Still, uh, less than a percent. So once it's done, uh, first let me copy my uh, so. Let me copy the public IP and let me go to my VM. So yeah, you can see we have got the success message. So let's go to the browser and uh, see whether the server is on or not. IP address so as you can see the default uh, web server has been uh, can we can access this web server so this is how you can uh, access your web server uh, using your VM so hope you guys have understood the concept of uh, creating the VM and uh, accessing your web to web app so for that uh, go to the all services and here under compute you can see app services click that so create one app service so in this case okay let me take some random resource group or you can create a resource group your own so let's create a uh, instant name let us Test app. Lol. So, uh, once it's done, you can publish your code or uh, Docker container. In this case, I'm using the Docker container. So let me stick it. And the uh, rest of everything I'm keeping default. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm using the Docker Hub. So basically the Docker Hub is a uh, hosted repository service uh, provided by the Docker for finding and sharing the container images. And uh, here let us uh, use the image tag so I mean uh, I'm following the process which is there in the Microsoft uh, Docs so access type images and um, so review and create and create
so the app is in deployment process let's wait for a few minutes and we'll be getting a link and we can access that web app let's go to the resources so in this case let's copy the URL URL so you can see here we have uh, we have uh, the Azure Container Instance so this is how uh, you can access your web app using uh, the app services so oh, hope you guys have understood the concept uh, how to which we are creating two different virtual machines and try to connect them let's go ahead and start so to create a virtual machine you can go to the search bar and uh, search the virtual machine or you can go to the all services and under the compute you can see the virtual machine you can click that so right now we don't have any uh, virtual machines uh, let's go ahead and create one and uh, let me take a default one which I have created uh, in the previous videos so if you have not seen those videos please go ahead and visit that so let me keep the name as virtual machine one and uh, So I'm just giving the default one and the RDP port is open. Let's go to the other devices. So let's uh, let's keep this as default and let's see the network. It's under uh, VM1 VNet. So let us leave it default. So let's go ahead and create. Well, uh, it takes few seconds to deploy the two VM. So let's try to refresh it. So once the uh, once the VM has been deployed, uh, we need to disable the firewall in that virtual machine so that we can connect it, uh, connect to the other uh, virtual machine in the same network. So I think it has been deployed. Just go to the resources. So you can see VM1 has been uh, created. Let's go ahead and create a uh, other virtual machine. So you can see VM1 is running right now. Let's go ahead and create other VM. Let me keep it in the same group. Let us see it as VM2. And uh, this is Azure user. And uh, I'm taking the same password. So same configurations. I'm leaving it default. And you can see it is in the same network that we have created VM so let it be the same let's go ahead and uh, review and create so once it's done let's go ahead and create so let's wait for a few seconds Try to refresh in between so that we can uh, see the process so meanwhile uh, let's go to the virtual machines you can see the VM2 is being create uh, it's creating whereas uh, VM1 is running so let's go ahead and uh, connect to the VM1 through RTP 
so download this file so you have created a user uh, when you when you were creating a virtual machine so you need to enter the username and password of so let's create uh, your user and uh, let me give the password and so once i entered my username and password you can see this uh, prompt just say yes so your virtual machine is been opening let's wait for a few more seconds and let's go ahead and uh, disable the firewall in it let's go to settings So in the settings, uh, you can, uh, let's go to the home here and you can see the network and internet, click that. And here you can see the Windows firewall, click that. And disable these two, private network and public network. Let's click it, disable it and go back, disable. Well, now it's disabled. So, Let's go to the PowerShell. Let's try to uh, ping the virtual machine 2, which we have created. So the command is ping VM2. So it's trying to connect, but it's not able to because the firewall is on, on the other device. So we have to disable that firewall as well so that these two uh, VMs can communicate with each other. So let's cancel this ping request uh, by clicking Ctrl C and let's go to the VM2. I'm minimizing this and uh, let me go to the VM2. <laughs> I guess my system got stuck. There you go. So now even uh, VM2 is running. Let's click the VM2 and uh, connect through RDP. Download the file. Do the same process as you have done for the VM1. Let's click connect. Use your username and password that you have created when creating the virtual machine. Oh, I have given it wrong password. Let's wait. Let me try once again. So it's done. Let's click yes. So now our virtual machine Two is being creating. Let's wait for that. So 
So let's uh, do the same process that we have uh, done for the VM1 that is disabling the firewall. Well, go to the settings. Go to the home, network and internet. Go to the Windows firewall. And here disable the firewall. and disable the private firewall as well so it has been disabled now let's go to the vm1 so as you can see initially when we were trying to ping vm2 uh, we got an error but let's try to ping now so now you can see uh, there is a successful response from vm2 which is in the same vnet uh, virtual network so I hope you guys have understood the concept of creating the virtual network and creating two different virtual machines in that network and uh, trying to communicate with each other. So hope you guys have understood. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. So today we are going to create a blob storage. So for that, uh, you can go to the all services or you can directly search in search bar. In this case, I'm going with the all services. So search for the storage. So you can see there is a storage and go to the storage accounts. So in the storage accounts, uh, click create. So come into resource group, uh, create a new resource group. Let us say storage group one. Let's click okay and uh, coming to the name. Let us give it as, okay. So I'm giving some random name for the storage uh, name. So here I'm uh, for the performance, I'm giving standard and uh, for the redundancy, change it to the local redundant storage. So basically the local redundant storage uh, replicates your data three times uh, within a single data center in a primary region. And it provides at least uh, 11 nines durability of uh, object over a year. So if you see, uh, you have other three options coming to the geo redundant storage. Uh, it copies your data synchronously three times within a single physical location uh, in the primary region using the uh, uh, LRS. Coming to the zone redundant storage, uh, it copies your data synchronously across uh, three Azure availability zones in a primary region. So just remember this is the availability zone, whereas uh, coming to the geo, it's a physical. So that is uh, one of the difference that uh, you have to remember. Coming to the geo uh, redundant storage, uh, in this case, uh, it uh, it copies your data synchronously across three availability zones in the primary region using the ZRS. That is zone uh, redundant storage. So let me keep it as uh, LRS, which is a cheap option right now. So I'm keeping okay. So as you can see, uh, access tires, it's hot. So so we want to frequently access this storage. That's the reason uh, we have kept it as hot. Uh, for example, if you uh, keep it as cool, then uh, the data is accessed infrequently. Only then you can keep it as uh, cool. So in this case, it's hot. Let us leave it default. Second point. Okay. Let me go ahead and create. So these are the default options. So our storage in is it's one to four. Let's wait for the deployment. It's been creating. So once uh, this is done, uh, let's go ahead and create a container in which uh, 
will uh, will be uploading some uh, files so it has been completed let's go to the storage account and uh, let's search for the containers as you can see we can see the container here let's go ahead and create a container in this case let us okay so it's done So I'm just keeping it default and going to create a container one. So here you can uh, upload your uh, files. In this case, let me upload the picture. Let us say icon one upload. So as you can see, uh, the access style is hot. Uh, so we can uh, access uh, frequently so this uh, particular can be accessed frequently so this is how we can create it so let's try to upload let's try to create another container I think it's the private one let's go ahead and uh, create uh, one other container so this container one and let's see it's container two and uh, the previous one was a private in this case let us make it as containers and uh, let's go ahead and create So let's go to the upload one. So even you can uh, change your options here, but I was waiting for some other option, which I'm not able to find right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go ahead and upload similar image and uh, you can also find the URL for this let's go ahead and click it so you can find the URL of uh, this particular icon and uh, you can see the details are uh, related to that and uh, so on and you can you can also delete uh, this in this case I'm just deleting the containers Uh, yeah so this is how we can uh, create your container and you can change your uh, public access levels uh, as I've done before so hope you are everyone uh, welcome back so today we are going to talk about SQL databases and we're gonna create it so as usual uh, you can go to the search bar and search for the databases or you can go to the all services and under the database you can check the SQL uh, databases mm, yeah there you go so now you can go ahead and create so let's uh, I don't have any research, uh, resources right now so let's go ahead and create one so in this case I'm creating the MRT and uh, Let's click OK and coming to the database let us give it as tp1 database and we don't have any server right now so let's go ahead and create one and uh, let me give the name as SQL server uh, just to be unique I added my starting three uh, letters uh, okay Le uh, let me give the admin uh, username and password so it's SQL database SQL user and uh, password so it's done uh, click OK 
Okay, let me save it. Okay, here I did some mistake. Okay, let's go to the process. So in this case, I'm selecting the local redundant backup uh, the cheap option right now. And I'm selecting the public endpoint and allow the service and resources uh, to access from the server, yes. And I'm keeping it as default. I don't want any free trial right now. So let's tell it, uh, select some sample existing data and no tags and just go ahead and review and create. Hopefully there should be no error right now. Let's wait for a few moments. Should be done. Let's go to the all uh, resources. Let me refresh. Take a lot of time. There you go. So you can see the server has been created. Uh, let's wait for the DB. I think it's taking some time. exactly there you go I think it, it has been created so here you can see uh, the query editor uh, just go to that and uh, let's click OK let's click OK so as you can see we got some error so we have to change the firewall rules for that we have to go to the okay. and set some firewall and just add a client let us save it so it's basically my uh, public IP So it's done. Let's go ahead and try now. There we go. So now you can see uh, whenever, uh, uh, like when we went to the firewall settings, there we have uh, uh, given our public IP address. 
using that now we can access it so actually the firewall isn't stopping that so let's go ahead and copy the query and uh, run it so as we have used the sample data as you can see or we can retrieve the data so this is how you can uh, create your own uh, database and this is a database server so hope you guys welcome back so today we are going to talk about azure functions so they are serverless solutions that allows you to write less code and maintain less infrastructure and save a lot of costs and let's go ahead and uh, start the lab which is uh, provided by the uh, microsoft docs so let's go ahead and start so you can go here and you can search for a functional app so which you can see here click here and let's go ahead and create one in this case let's go ahead and create a new resource group let us say it as sample group sample one and let's click ok and uh, let's give the functional name uh, let us say uh, just to be unique uh, and code and uh, here running stack let's go ahead and uh, select .NET and the version 3.1 has mentioned and the uh, region let's go ahead and create the east us it's done and let's go ahead and create the review and create you can check the other options as well but right now uh we're not going through it tags and review and let's go ahead and create so these are the default options i'll just go ahead and check once again and uh, create let's wait for some time uh till it get deployed so once it's deployed uh, we're gonna use a http trigger function and test it so let's wait for some time again let's go ahead for the functional app and let's see whether okay it has been created let's go to the function app that we have created here you can see we are inside this and in this We have to select the functions. So uh, this will be uh, generated uh, in few minutes. We'll be seeing like once we come back. Uh, let's go ahead and create some functions. So let's create, and uh, you'll be selecting the default one that is developer in portal. So there are other options as well, but uh, right now we are going with the development portal and HTTP trigger. Let's go ahead and click this and create. This should take less time. Yeah. So now go to the code and test. So here you can get the URL of the uh, URL of this function. Let's go ahead and get it. Let's copy this one and uh, paste it. You can see we have got a response. So the URL is working. So you can uh, pass your uh, name in this. So we can do that by using uh, ampersand and uh, name equal to my name so you can see it has been changed so this is how you can uh, uh, test your code so what so we have done testing oh yeah so since we have uh, used this particular uh, URL there should be some logs which uh, will be created which will be generated in the monitor uh, 
screen. Let's. There you go. You can see there are some logs which have been generated uh, successfully since uh, we have uh, the URL was successful. So we have got the 200, uh, the result code has 200, uh, which is the success. So hope you guys have known the concept of uh, the functional app, how to create it and how to test the code. So if you are uh, welcome back. So today we are going to create a VM with partial. Let's go ahead and start. So on the right corner, you can see a icon here called the cloud shell. Let's go ahead and click that. So let's go to the advanced settings since we have uh, no storage mounted. Let's go ahead and uh, name. So I'm just selecting the default things uh, that have created recently. Even this is, uh, yeah. So this should be fine. Uh, let's go ahead and create. So once it is created, uh, we'll use some commands uh, in the partial to create the virtual machine. And uh, we'll also uh, try to stop the virtual machine uh, in the partial using some commands which is specified in the Microsoft Docs. So it's done. Now let's try to create resource group. So I have copied the command and just paste it. Mirror. but you can see the status it is succeeded what about the other one hmm. let's go ahead and do that once again so now it's good uh, there is no error okay cool so let's go ahead and uh, create a virtual machine so these are the commands uh, that need to be used uh, when you want to create a virtual machine so i'll be keeping this in the description so the username is uh, Azure user and password is let me copy and paste so the process started uh, our virtual machine is being created So I have recently tried this so I think that's the reason I've got few errors here maybe it takes some time to refresh so so I think that's the reason so you can see uh, the VM has been created let's try to go to VM virtual machines so you can see uh, our VM has been created so you can see the options uh, if, if you want to check like what are the default options that uh, it has uh, given you can go and check all these uh, default options if you want so in this case uh, I'm trying another command to get the information of the name and resource group and uh, few others like location and status so you can see our VM is running and uh, even we can see it, it, it has already started running. So it is in the running state. 
let's go ahead and stop the vm now so for that this is the command so to suspend it uh, you have to click yes in this case i'll be typing yes well it takes a few minutes to process this uh, request so now you can see i have uh, i was able to click the stop button but in few uh, minutes it will be disappearing so i can't click the stop button since we already stopped it using the partial so once it's done uh, it will be in the deallocated state uh, we'll be getting the information using uh, uh, some code once this is done let us go and paste that thing hmm. there you go so it has stopped so state is succeed but still i'm seeing it let's go ahead and refresh there you go now you can see i'm able to start but i can't stop because we already have stopped it so let's go ahead and uh, get the information of it now you can see it's, it it has been deallocated since we have stopped it so this is how you can use few commands uh, to create your virtual machine and uh, perform some operations and i just want to show you uh, azure uh, quick start templates as well so these are the few templates uh, which you can use in your azure so in this case uh, i'll be using some default vm so let's see so there is a simple windows vm which will uh, which we will be using now so you can see deploy to azure let's click that and let's click the id so now you can see we have uh, so the template has loaded and you can edit the template and you can uh, edit the parameters as well and you can visualize it so you can see you can edit it if you want to but in this case i'm not editing anything and even the parameters as well so these are the parameters that you can see and coming to visualize you can see how uh, this template is uh, configured so this is how it is so i can create a new group or uh, i can take a uh, existing group and uh, i can directly review and create it so my vm will be uh, created so even you can uh, use this quick starts which is uh, uh, way simpler than you know going uh, going manually so so i just want to show you this quick starts as well so hope you guys have con uh, understood the concept of quick starts as well as uh, configuring through partial so hope you guys have understood hello everyone so today we are going to talk about azure key vault which is a cloud service for securely storing and accessing the secrets so basically you can store your api keys passwords or certificates or even uh, cryptographic keys so let's go ahead and start so you can go to the all services and you can find the key vault in the security So you can go to key vaults or you can directly search in the search bar so i'm going to key vaults so right now i don't have any key vaults let's go ahead and create one so let's go ahead and create a uh, one resource group let's say it as vault and name of the vault is so key vault 1 2 3 uh, and uh, let us keep all the options default so the soft uh, delete is enabled so within 90 days and i'm keeping everything as default if you want to add tags you can uh, add attack so now it's validating uh, it's checking whether uh, there is any policy which is stopping these to create 
so there is no such policy so the validation has been passed let's go ahead and create so once the key vault is created uh let's go ahead and uh, add some uh, secret keys uh, for instance let us say the password So it's done let's go to the resources the key vault is ready and you can see various options here and here I'm going to the secrets and there is no secrets as of now because I just created now uh, let's go ahead and generate and import so here it's taking default let us say my API key So I'm just typing some random API key, like just <laughs> random words. So let us say it is a new API. I'm just leaving everything as default. You can add tags if you want. In this case, I'm not adding anything. So let's go ahead and create. So once it's created, you can click your API key and check whether it's enabled or not and once you click that you can see uh, your API key is stored here if you want to see you can uh, click show secret value and you can see the random uh, text that I have entered mm -hmm. and only you can access this uh, because you are the admin now only you can access this no other can so this is how uh, the key vault uh, works and this is how you need to proceed in the show so hope you guys have understood and thank you guys uh, welcome back so today we'll be talking about secure network traffic uh, which is the third lab and in this we are going to create a virtual machine and uh, add some network security group and we're gonna add some rules which allows to against the inbound and outbound rules so let's go ahead and start uh, creating the virtual machine let's go ahead and uh, create a virtual machine So in this case, let me take it as uh, my VM one. Okay. Let me add my VM. Let the region be uh, East US. Let's jump to. Let me add the password. So I'm removing all the rules while creating a virtual machine, and even in the networking, I'm removing the group management boot diagnosis and uh, let's go ahead and create so we have uh, removed all the security groups uh, while creating the VM so instead of that we will be creating the uh, NSG and we'll be adding the rules in that let's go ahead and create so meanwhile uh, let's go ahead and uh, Add a network security group which will be in the networking let's go ahead and create a new security group so let me take it as my vm and uh, my vm nsg let's go ahead and create so initially the rdp will be denied so we have to create the rules for that so we have to add the inbound rule so it's done create let's go to the resources and uh, we have to add the inbound and outbound rules before that 
we have to associate the network interface so once it's done uh, let's go ahead and add the inbound rule done so let's add one inbound rule so in this case the port will be the rdp1 which is uh, 3389 tcp and we gonna allow that so i think everything is fine allow rdp let's go ahead and uh, allow it now let's go ahead and uh, access the virtual machine connect download So connect so I have to use my username and password uh, so there has been an error SG. we are uh, allowing the RTP why exactly it's not working Let's go ahead and try once again. So let's add my username and password, which is uh, Azure user and uh, the password. Okay. So you can see now I'm able to connect it. I think it, it took some time to uh, refresh that settings. Hmm. Hmm. Now here uh, we'll be trying some few websites. Uh, in this case we'll be taking the Microsoft and let's try to access it. So initially uh, we should access the website next we'll try to add some outbound rules and try to delay the internet let's go ahead and try that
so let me access the website now you can see uh, I was able to access the website uh, but let's uh, go ahead and add some outbound rules and deny that so in this case let's go to the outbound rules and let's add the rule so internet and uh, coming to the codes and in this case we are uh, deny, uh, denying the internet so the priority is 110 so it is the highest priority so let's give it as allow internet sorry deny internet <laughs> okay add it Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, so the rule has been created. Let's go ahead and uh, try to refresh and see whether we are uh, able to access the internet or not. Well, I was able to access. Let's mm -hmm. let's go ahead and check. updated it let's go ahead and check now <laughs> so this is a good indication that uh, we are not able to access the internet and uh, the rule has been successfully implemented there you go so now you can see uh, we are not able to access the internet and uh, the website is down because we uh, we have created a rule in which uh, we are denying the internet. So this is how uh, you can uh, create uh, various uh, rules in NSG. So hope you guys have come and thank you guys. Everyone, uh, welcome back. So today we'll be talking about uh, role based access controls so let's go ahead and create a resource group so you can click the resource group here you can search from search bar or you can go to the all services and uh, click the resource group so in this case I'm giving as my resource group click create So the resource group has been uh, created. Let's go to the resource group. You can see the options here and uh, you can go to the access control IAM and you can see here like uh, you can see your roles and you can grant the access to the other users that you want. So and you can see the role assignments has have not did anything. It's empty. Coming to the roles you have all uh, built-in roles you can also create a custom role you can see option here you can create a custom role as well so if you want to know more about uh, these things you uh, like please check the previous videos uh, in which i have explained about the custom roles as well and you can see the lock section here let's go ahead and uh, create some locks click add and in this case let us say it as rg log and you have two different options uh, read only and delete so basically the read only uh, if you keep the read only uh, the users cannot do the modifications on it uh, even the admin so if you click the delete uh, no one can delete uh, this particular resource group let's click ok if you want you can add the description as well so we have created the lock let's go ahead and uh, 
delete this group uh, let's paste the name of it you can see uh, this resource group cannot be deleted uh, because there, uh, there are locks on this so let's try to add some members to this group and uh, let's see whether we can delete those members or not so in this case let us go ahead and uh, create a, a storage accounts so you can uh, go to the all services or you can just search from the search bar so you can go to the storage part and you can see the storage accounts click the storage accounts and uh, click create so in this case you can see there is a default resource group change it to the resource group that you have created recently and uh, let me take the default one I think it's already created so let us stay so it's done uh, let us keep it as standard and uh, redundancy let's take it as the lowest one LRS so if you want to know more about uh, uh, what these options are uh, please do check the previous videos so this should be fine let's go and review and create so I have created it so mostly there should be no policies that uh, restrict this so it should be created as it is doing now let's go ahead and refresh so once uh, it is created let's uh, try to delete uh, this group So the resource group has been, uh, sorry, the storage group has been created and uh, let's try to delete it. You can see we have got an error message uh, that this resource or the parent group uh, is in a delete lock. So if these two cases are satisfied, then uh, we cannot delete the, uh, the groups. So for this, we have to remove that uh, uh, lock in the resource group so which uh, we'll be doing now resource groups so let's go to the locks and try to delete this so now we have deleted the lock and uh, now try to delete this resource group So you can see uh, there is a storage account associated with this resource group even that will be deleted let's click ok so now you can see uh, there is no error uh, right now since we have uh, there is no locks associated with this resource group so this is how uh, we create the resource groups and uh, add locks to it so hope you guys understood the concept of resource and uh, thank you guys Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we'll be talking about the tags. So basically the tags are used to organize the Azure resources and manage them. So let's go ahead and start. So let's go to the all services. And in this, uh, we have to select the policy. So let's go ahead and search for it, which will be in management and governance. So you can see the policy here, click it. And in the policy, uh, you can see the authorizing right. So under this, you can see the assignments. So click it. And here we are going to sign a policy. Let's create it. And uh, it's gonna be a subscription level. So let's go. Let's go ahead and select the policy definition. Let's go to create this. So we have a lot of uh, built-in functions. So in this, uh, we are specifically selecting the tag so in this case we are uh, using the required tag and its value on the resources so it enforces a, a required tag and its value does it uh, does not apply to the resource group so we have uh, we are going to select this one click it and select so if you want you can uh, add some description as well uh, in this case i'm just leaving it default and coming to the parameters uh, i'm adding the parameters in this case So company and uh, 
let us click MRT. So this is my tag that I have created. Let's go ahead and review and create. So let's go ahead and create. So now you can see it has created. Well, it may take some time. So meanwhile, let's just go and uh, try to create a storage group. So you know where the storage group is, right? So it will be another storage. So you can see here uh, the storage accounts. Click that and let's go ahead and add a storage group. So in this case, I'll be creating a new group. Okay, there is already a policy group, so I'm just clicking that and coming to the name. I'm going to select the random one in the drop down list us standard and uh, in this case i'm going to select the cheap one uh, and uh, i'm just leaving everything as uh, default you can see there is a mark here but let's go ahead and create so you can see you have uh, got a validation failed uh, required information is missing so since there is a policy uh, which is stopping it that's the reason like we got uh, the validation failed so you can't create it. So even though if you try to create like you'll be getting the error. So you have to give the tag name uh, which we have uh, assigned to the subscription level. So let's go ahead and uh, give the tags. So it's company and MRT. So this is the tag name that I have given. So now when you go to review and create it is running and now the validation is passed. So now you can go ahead and create your uh, storage account. So well, it takes some time. So now you can see like we have successfully created the storage account uh, since the policy has been satisfied by creating the tax. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, check the tags so you can see in the general you can see the tags click that so we have one tag that I have created recently so this is the only tag that I have right now in my uh, Azure bottle let's go ahead and create so once uh, uh, the storage group that we have created is done uh, we can see it here now you can see like uh, the tag related to the storage group this is how we, you can uh, filter it you can also add some filters if you want in this case I'm not adding any filters so this is how uh, you can uh, use your tags to find the resources and manage them so now I'm just going to delete all the storage group so whenever you are uh, trying this lab uh, please do delete the uh, groups or uh, like whatever you've done just delete it so that uh, there will be no additional costs so thank you guys hopefully like you have understood the concept of tax and if you have liked the video please click the like button below and uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel and thank you guys